All right, so now that we have the basic ideas for the problem solving process, we're gonna look at several applications of doing them. And the first one's gonna be inclined planes, okay? So now remember when we do the X and Y axes, when we, def we get to define which way positive and negative directions. However, we have scenarios where blocks may be sliding up or down a ramp at an incline. And there's nothing special about horizontal being X and vertical being Y, that's just how your math teaches you X and Y axes, but there's, no, there's nothing in the universe that says it must be horizontal to be X, right? X axes can be different, and that's what we did in unit one. We did some problems where, when we were doing the decomposition where we had different axes, because we were preparing for scenarios where it might make sense to have it not the horizontal or vertical be the axes that we deal with. The reason is, is because it's a lot easier when the acceleration is in one direction. Okay, so when a block slides up or down the ramp, the velocities and the accelerations might be parallel to the ramp. In an instance like that, if you, if you, if you just keep your axes vertical and horizontal, then your acceleration has an X and Y component. And it's just mathematically, you can do it, but it's just a little more annoying. So in, instead, what we do is we rotate the axes. If there is an acceleration, if the acceleration is then like in the parallel to the axes, we do that so the acceleration is only in the x direction and the acceleration is zero in the y direction because that way the acceleration vector only points in that. Now, you don't have to do this if the acceleration is zero. If there's no net acceleration because maybe it's just sitting there or it's moving at constant velocity, then it's not quite necessary to rotate the axes. It's sort of optional at that point, but it is really, really, really helpful to do it when the acceleration is non-zero in particular when it is parallel to the ramp. So let's talk about like, let's talk about, let's go through a scenario like this. Okay, so a block of mass of 12 kilograms on inclined plane. The plane is inclined at angle 30 degrees. What value of F will keep the block from moving? So here, if we think about our problem summing steps, we think about it's not moving, so the acceleration is definitely zero here. Okay, so in this case, we don't necessarily need to decompose, but let's go ahead and first draw our free body diagram, right? So we have gravity acting downward. What's touching it? We have an F pointing to the right here. What else is touching it? We have a surface right here that exerts a normal force perpendicular to that surface. And in this case, you can, oh yeah, this angle here is 30 degrees, wasn't in the problem. So that means the angle um, here is 30 degrees. Now you could, because the acceleration is zero, you can keep it horizontal and vertical like this, which is what I would suggest in a problem like this, but there are scenarios where not. So let's do it both ways. The classical way is we would just say like, oh, we're gonna decompose this and this, right? And so this is Fn sine 30 degrees. This is Fn cosine 30 degrees. And because the acceleration is zero, the F net is zero, we'll say right is positive, up is positive. So then if we look at the X direction, F net is gonna be zero because the acceleration is zero. So in the X direction, we have F pointing to the right. We have Fn sine 30 degrees pointing to the left. So that's negative, and then that equals zero. And in the y direction, F net is still zero. So we have Fn cosine 30 degrees pointing up, and then Mg pointing down, that's equal to zero. Now we wanna solve for F. I gotta get rid of Fn here. So Fn I can solve over here. It's Mg divided by cosine 30 degrees. And then we can plug that into here. We get F is equal to Fn sine 30 degrees, just moving this to the other side and that's equal to mg over cosine 30 degrees times sine 30 degrees, okay? So you could do that. That would be an option. Now, the inclined plane method will work on the next problem as an example, but we could rotate the axes. Again, only do it if the acceleration is parallel to the ramp. If not, it's optional, all right? So this one we didn't. Let's look at one here. Um, force is applied to a block to move it up a 30 degree incline. The incline is frictionless. If F equals 65 newtons and M is five kilograms, what is the magnitude of the acceleration of the block? So this one, we're moving it up the ramp. It didn't tell you it's speeding up or slowing down, but let's just assume that the acceleration is going this way. If we get a negative number, it means we're incorrect, but let's assume the acceleration is parallel to the ramp. So because that, of that, we're going to then rotate our axes. So let's draw our free body diagram. We have MG pointing down. What's touching it? We have F pointing to the left here. Okay, and then uh, we have the surface touching it, so we have a normal force, almost very similar to the other one. But now because the acceleration is pointing this way, okay, 
we're gonna make the axes parallel. We're gonna change this, this to be the X axis and perpendicular to the ramp to be the Y axis. Now that does require us to know things. So one of the things that's hard to see is like how, where are the angles? Where does this 30 degrees come into play when we're doing something like this? You can, if you're comfortable with geometry, it's fine. But the easiest way to think about it is think about the axes looking like this before, right? So this is the X and the Y. And how much are we rotating this axis? If you look at this, we've got to rotate these axes. And so if this was sitting up and down, we have to rotate it, how much? 30 degrees, right? We've got to rotate it 30 degrees. So this is before and after. So these axes had to get rotated 30 degrees. So this guy was originally horizontal, right? But now it's rotated, say, and this is the vertical axis. This is rotated 30 degrees because this is normally up and down. So this got rotated 30 degrees. And same with this guy. This guy, the x-axis was normally horizontal, but we rotated it. So this is 30 degrees here. Okay, you can also look at it from here. This was 30 degrees, right? Because they show you that. But okay, so now we're going to decompose. We got to decompose two things. Mg has to be decomposed into Mg sine 30 degrees and Mg cosine 30 degrees, right? See that? We decompose it like that. Right, make that right triangle. And this guy, we got to decompose just like we did in projectile motion. We got to do that decomposition. This would be F cosine 30 degrees. This would be F sine 30 degrees. Now we only want the acceleration and we'll make up the ramp the positive direction. So now let's do F net equals MA in the X direction. Right? So what, what forces are up the ramp? F cosine 30 degrees is up the ramp. What's down the ramp? Uh, MG sine 30 degrees is down the ramp. There are no other horizontal forces parallel to the ramp. So then that just equals M times A. And we actually have enough information now. Let's, but let's go and do the Y direction. In this case, the F net is gonna be zero. Why is it gonna be zero? Because the acceleration vector is parallel to the X axis. So there's no Y component. And that's the power. This being zero was the power of doing this method is because we've zeroed out in the Y direction. The acceleration has no component pointing out up and out of the ramp or into the ramp, right? There's no Y component. So then this just gets to be zero over here in the Y direction. So then we're gonna say, okay, FN is pointing out of the ramp, that's positive. Or let's say this is the positive direction. And then F sine 30 degrees is into the ramp, so it's negative. And then MG cosine 30 degrees is pointing into the ramp. So that's negative, right? Because this way is the positive direction, that's equal to zero. Now we wanna just solve for F and we know, all, well, actually, we want to solve for the acceleration. So we're going to divide by M here. And we actually know all of these because they told you this is 65 cosine 30 degrees minus whatever the mass of the block, which is 5. G equals 10 or 9.8 sine 30 degrees. And then all of that divided by 5. And that would give you the acceleration. Now, I'm not going to do the calculator part. You can plug that into the calculator. I think you're able to do that. But you just plug that into the calculator. That gives you the acceleration there. Okay. So another example, we have a force applied to cause an acceleration of two meters per second squared up the plane. All right, so now we know the direction of the acceleration. So let's draw our free body diagram. We have MG pointing down. What's touching it? We have an F parallel to the ramp like this. What else is touching it? The surface here. So that exerts a normal force perpendicular to the surface like that. Okay, cool. And we know the acceleration is already at two meters per second squared and we'll make that the positive direction. So we're gonna make this our x-axis, this our y-axis, in order for the x-axis to have all of the acceleration. So the mg, this becomes mg, and just these problems all happen to use 30 degrees. They don't have to be 30 degrees, but remember this one here is 30 degrees, mg sine 30 degrees. And then let's do in the x-direction, f net up the ramp, f net equals ma. So F is pointing up the ramp, MG sine 30 degrees is pointing down the ramp. That's equal to MA. And in the Y direction, if we make this direction positive, the F net's gonna be zero, by the way, because there's no acceleration in the Y direction, right? Because it's only pointing parallel. That's our entire point purpose was to point it parallel to the X axis. So I have FN minus MG cosine 30 degrees is equal to zero because there's no acceleration. But we just want to solve for F. MA plus MG sine 30 degrees. So that's gonna be 100 times the acceleration of two plus 100 times 
G, we'll use 10. You can use 9.8, 10, it doesn't matter. Sine of 30 degrees is one half. So this is gonna be 200 plus 500, 700 Newtons there. If you use 9.8, of course you get a slightly different number there. Okay, so that's the idea. That's how we handle inclined planes problems.